Yo, what's up guys, Timmy here. It's review week, review week guys. This week I'm gonna review a fragrance every single day until the next weekly rotation. Well, except niche day. Niche day is Saturday, I'll still do a niche video. But throughout the time, five days out of this week, I'm gonna be reviewing a fragrance every one of those days because I'm a fragrance reviewing channel and guess what? I don't do a lot of reviews. I just discovered that I don't really do too many reviews on my channel. I might do like a once a week or sometime one or two every month or stuff like that. So I don't do that many reviews. I think it's because it's just a little bit more boring for me to make. I'd rather make top tens. I'd rather show you guys a lot of fragrances instead of just one fragrance, but I'm gonna become an actual fragrance reviewer now with this review week. So starting off with review week is a fragrance that is super popular that I haven't reviewed for some reason and it's one that I should have a review on on my channel already so I'm gonna get through that and this week's gonna be dedicated to that. I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna be reviewing fragrances that I should have reviewed a long time ago. This one is Aquadigio Profumo. <laughs> Aquadigio Profumo probably one of the most popular releases of the past five, six years. This one is an improvement version of the original Aquity Joe, and I love the original Aquity Joe, by the way. I wore it a lot when I was in college. When I first smelled it the first time, it was such a magical smelling scent. I'm sure you guys remember the first time smelling Aquity Joe for yourself, and you just feel like this is the god amongst fragrance. There's nothing else. I would pay a high price tag for that, and I did. I paid retail for the original Aquity Joe. I didn't know about fragrance net at the time, Plus, I think I was in Thailand at the time as well for college, so I really didn't know that you can buy fragrances cheaper online. So I paid full retail for a 60 ml bottle of the original Aqua Di Joe. I used it all already and it's gone now. So I have this one as a replacement. But the original Aqua Di Joe has gotten me some of the most memorable compliments ever and girls just really love it. It's just one of those scents that you can feel extremely, extremely confident about every time you wear it. That's what Akuri Joe is. It's such a godly, godly of a designer scent for men. And this one is even better, even better. In terms of scent, this one improves upon the original DNA with incense and patchouli and toned down a lot of the citrus notes and a little bit of the marine notes. So it still has the really fresh marine vibe of the original Aquadi Joe, but not as zesty, not as summery, but more on the darker side, the so incense and patchouli really shines out. And to me, that really brings the DNA of Aquadi Joe into the modern era, because back then, I think a decade ago or two decades ago, fragrances are tend to be a little bit more top heavy than base notes heavy. Like the original Aquadi Joe or Loam by YSL, those fragrances tend to be a lot more top heavy and the base kind of just, you know, it fades away or the scents tend to be extremely linear. Now, modern era fragrances, modern era most complimented fragrances tend to be a little bit more well balanced. They have a very punchy opening that's a tension grabbing opening, but it's backed up by very, very strong base notes as well. Like Dior Sauvage backed up by very strong Ambroxan, Bleu Chanel backed up by strong incense notes, and this one, incense patchouli, Dylan Blue, incense patchouli. So it has a very strong fresh opening and a very strong base to back it up. That's what modern era compliment getters do. And with the addition of incense and patchouli, it brings Aquadi Joe into the modern era, which works extremely, extremely well. Like it fits the DNA so, so good. Another masterpiece, dare I say, in terms of the scent. So I actually really enjoy this one myself. I don't wear it so often simply because, ah, man, Aquadi Joe DNA, I've worn a whole bottle of it already. And although this one smells different, I still feel like it's a little bit too the same for me for my personal taste to wear it again. I no longer feel special wearing an Aqua Di Gio DNA because I do still smell it everywhere. I don't smell the Profumo version everywhere. I smell the original still everywhere. And when I wear this, I just feel like another run of the mill guy and this no longer feels special. It does smell really, really good though. And I still use it when it comes to situations where I need a safer scent, I'll still reach for it, absolutely. But it no longer feels like a special fragrance like it did 10 years ago for me. In terms of the vibe, to explain this scent in the most easiest way possible, this one is fresh, masculine, clean, and professional at the same time. It's just a very reserved scent. Some people even put this in like the wedding top 10 list because it just smells that refined, smells that gentlemanly, and overall just masculine and fresh. So that's why this makes a lot of wedding lists, this makes a lot of summer lists because it's just masculine and fresh. It smells extremely good, aquatic, with some citrus and some dark notes. It's a very, very just easy to wear type of DNA. That's why it's so, 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 so popular. So if you were to ask me if you like anything that is fresh, aquatic, 
aquatic in any given way at all, you would really, really enjoy Aquajo Profumo. And especially if you like the original, you'd really love this one. Next, let's move on to performance. The longevity of this one on my skin lasts anywhere between five to eight hours, and it varies because of the season. If I wear it in the summertime, it lasts a little bit longer. If I wear it in wintertime, of course, it lasts a little bit less because there's not enough sun to help it project. But it lasts around five to eight hours for me generally. And in the projection department, not so well, but better than the original. Everything here is better than the original. The original Aguri Joe lasts on me maybe four hours max, four to five hours max. And the projection on that old one is rather soft, like 30 minutes to an hour of decent projection. This one is about an hour to two hours of decent projection, which is not so bad, but it's nothing too beastly. So if you're a beast mode fragrance lover, this one is definitely not gonna be in your wheelhouse. It's a little more subtle. It lingers around in this area but it does last a good amount of time if you wear it in the sun. Next, we have Occasion. And Occasion, this can be worn absolutely anytime. This is a signature scent. It can be worn, like I said, even in weddings. It can be worn to work. I wear it to work. It can be worn on a date because it is sexy and masculine enough for a date. And fresh fragrances tend to do extremely, extremely well with the ladies because fresh, clean, masculine, no one hates fresh, clean, and masculine. So fresh fragrances tend to do extremely well. So I do highly recommend this one for a date. If you are considering wearing it for a date, go for it, it works. You can wear it in other situations as well, like formal wear, like I said again, weddings, because it does smell dark enough. It has that instance in patchouli that gives it that refined and regal, very professional and high-end vibe as well. So definitely an anytime fragrance at all. In terms of season, it works best in the summer and springtime, of course. Fall and winter time absolutely still works, but just know that it will perform a little bit less for you due to how cold the weather is and due to the just the lack of performance this one already has in comparison to other fragrances like Sauvage, who has beastly, beastly performance. This one won't work for you as well in fall and winter, but if you're indoors, absolutely any time at all. So versatility for this is top notch. Next, we have the Compound Factor. Now this one, I can't say too much about it from raw data alone because I haven't really worn this one all too much. But the original Aquari Joe have gotten me a lot of compliments, like countless amount of compliments. You know, when you wear a whole bottle of something, you'll get some compliments, but Aquari Joe, got me a lot of compliments. And I've given out a lot of compliments to people who wear Aquari Joe itself. So, so this one with similar DNA, I have zero doubt at all it'll get you some compliments because it just smells extremely good. It's a staple fragrance. So if you do wear this one, the compliment getting potential is really, really high. It's really in the all-star range with Dior Sauvage, Blue Chanel, and all those other fragrances. So yeah, comment factor, I would not worry about that at all. And any girl who have had tried this, all of them love it. All of them love it. It's not just like, oh, I like it. Oh, it's okay. It's, they love it. It smells extremely, extremely good. Some might not be their absolute favorite, but it's definitely in the top tier list for fragrances that girls really love. Next, we're gonna talk about the price. And this one I found online, 100 ml for around $55 and the highest being around $71. So it ranges around that area. In that price, it is an okay price for a designer fragrance, especially one with Aqua Di Joe on the name because Aqua Di Joe is never really cheap. Like it's hard to find Aqua Di Joe on the cheap to begin with. So Aqua Di Profumo at 55 something dollars is really not bad. If you save up just a little bit of money or if you're in high school, you save up just a little bit of allowance, you can definitely purchase this fragrance, no problem. So the price, I really have nothing bad to say about it. For the amount of uses that you're going to get out of this fragrance, the versatility and the common factor, 55 bucks is a no brainer. Lastly, the pros and cons. So let's go over what's good and what's bad about this fragrance. Number one thing that's good about this fragrance is it's so, so, so mass appealing. If you're looking for a mass appealing scent, this one is an all-star, the original was number one. This one is super, super close and to me actually even better than the original because it does have some darker notes, more modern notes in it. So mass appeal is absolutely number one for this fragrance. Versatility, you can wear this absolutely anytime. So if you're one of those people who want small collection, this one is one that you definitely need to check out if you've not done so yet. Now onto the cons, performance. Performance might not be the best for some of you people who love Beast Mode fragrances. Actually for me, I have a problem in the projection department being a little soft in the fall and winter time, but you know, I really can't complain too much. But it's not the type of performance that I'm too crazy about. I want it to be better. So con number one, definitely the performance. Con number two, is popular. The DNA is popular. So if you really don't want to smell like any regular guy out there, because Aqua Di Joe is very prominent, man. I smell it here in Vegas all the time. And this one in the air smells very similar to Aqua Di Joe, a little less fresh, but it's very similar. So if you want to smell more unique, this is really not the one that you should choose. But if you just want something that works, you know, this one works really well. But 
Con number two is just so popular. It's not unique anymore. It's very just, every guy wears it because it works. It just works. But if you want to smell unique, this is not it. All right, guys, that's it for the first review of review week. I'm excited for this review week. <laughs> uh, man, it's finally time for me to become an actual fragrance reviewer and review some fragrances for you guys and stop doing so many top 10s. I know mean, I love top 10 videos. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned tomorrow for another designer review. And with that, I'll see you guys next time. Peace, bye.